right. Okay, so in this dev blog, uh, I, I decided to create a video that would document my progress in the uh, in a series of experiments I'll be doing for my PhD. Uh, one of which is to perform or is to, is to come up with an architecture that will uh, solve the one-shot learning problem wherein you have small um, data that will be able to uh, yield a, a, an accurate classification mo model regardless of having limited, um, limited data available. So in any case, one of the common tasks for such experiments is to convert image data into its uh, vector format. So you can start to uh, run it under a neural network or basically any uh, machine learning classification uh, model. But in any case, uh, since, since I decided to document my progress, one of the first task, tasks I have to do is to see how the models I'll be creating will fare off against a uh, against the Omniglot dataset, which is basically a set of images of handwritten images that that um, that that uh, that that we can perform uh, classification with. So, for example, we have um, say Greek, for example, and you have character one for Greek-like symbols, right? Or uh, let's choose another data set. Alphabet of the Magi, for example. Okay, so you have something like this. Right? So the idea here is that, well, at least the first step for this video is to be able to take this image and create a utility that will essentially vectorize it. Right? So all each possible pixel will will correspond to a feature in the image. Right? And just to keep it simple, this feature will be binarized. Right, so if it's if it if it's black, probably I'll set it to one. If it's white, then it's zero, or vice versa. Okay, so this video will be about creating the tool to vectorize an image, um, to t turn an image to its vector form. And actually, I actually did this already, and it's actually up in the GitHub page. But um, it would be a nice rewrite just to see how because it, it was I think ten months ago in the previous work. So. I'm just going to rewrite it from scratch just to uh, document the entire process. Okay. okay, so to start off, I'm going to create my uh, repository. I'll just name this img to vector. And this one will be, oh, right, it's already here. So I'll use another project name. I'll name this um, image to vector. <laughs> just so it's different. Okay, so well, actually, now that it's it, it's now that it's present, maybe I can just copy the CMake uh, list of text. And, but essentially, this one will be written in C plus plus, and the only dependency for this will be the OpenCV library. So the way this is set up, okay, let me just set up CMake first. So CMake minimum required version zero project we'll name this image to vector okay, set c make build type debug okay, just set up a few flags the same value for c make cxx flags CSS should be CXX. Uh, and by the way, this is the first video that I'll be doing. C plus plus fourteen. This is the first video that I'll be doing with my um, relatively new laptop. It's my my old Asus laptop actually broke down. I'm now using uh, a ThinkPad T four seventy. So actually, the cameras. Better than my old uh, ASUS laptop in terms of frame rate. Right. So, in the CMake file, we'll have OpenCV required. So this will look for the package uh, OpenCV and include and include it in the build process for the software. 
course we have add executable and I'll just name this image to vector src main.cpp right so I'll just be using a single cpp file just keep it simple now to link the file to the libraries it will be something like image to vector which is our executable and we're going to link it with opencv lights right and take note i'm doing this in ubuntu so it might be a different process for other linux distributions or probably um might be different for for other linux distributions or even uh, window windows so. okay i think this should do the trick okay so we're gonna try it out right let's just create a simple directory here we have main.cpp right there okay let's include some basic stuff io stream Just make sure that this compiles. So I'm gonna do C make that. Right, make, right, and it's working. Right. So the first thing we have to do is to add in the OpenCV headers so we can start using OpenCV. Just open up my reference here. So starting OpenCV3, I believe, um, by the way, I'll, I'll be using OpenCV3 for this. Uh, there's this single header that we can include that has everything for us, which is the uh, include OpenCV2, OpenCV.hpp, which is kind of confusing for me because even if I installed OpenCV3, I still have to include it as OpenCV. Okay. I'll say using namespace CV and we'll need another bunch of other things other headers such as vector of course um, F stream to be able to read from a file because the idea is I'd like to have um, I'd like to open a directory where the images are and then define an output file which will contain the vectorized values for these images Okay, so those are the headers that I'll be using. And then we'll just have a simple syntax here, syntax print print out here. And the syntax for this program will be the following. Okay, we'd like to call the executable and then we'd like to pass an input directory where the set of images are and of course the output file. So we have that. Uh, let me just test it. Make it again. All right. So that will be our syntax. And uh, just to make sure that. I'm going to create a project for this image to vector. Okay, Tmuxinator is a nice tool that sort of creates a Tmux session for a particular project. All right, so you define things like, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot this. Um, let's see now. All right, so we define the project, the root of the project, which, which is in my workspace image to vector. And then I'll just have two windows, the editor, which is Vim, and the compiler, which will automatically run make, I guess, or cmake dot, 
and make. All right, let's try this out. Okay, so Moxinator, start image to vector. Okay, so I have two panels open here, one for my editor and the compiler, which will run cmake dot and make. Right. So, all right. Okay, so I have my print syntax right there. So just a couple of other things before we go to the actual um, the actual flow of the program, right? Uh, we're gonna check if argc, right, the number of arguments that you pass in our main method. Right, argc is not equal to three. Then we print out the syntax and exit the program. Right. Else, oh, we don't need else to just print out the syntax right there. So we're requiring the user to actually pass an input directory and an output file. Right. Okay, now I'm going to define some utility methods here. First of which would be the uh, fetch JPEG paths according to a file. Right? So the idea here is that I have this method that would return a vector of strings corresponding to the path of um, let's say fetch files. Right? Fetch files according to some string path. Right? And what this will do is that it will define a directory and try to open that directory can't remember which Stack Overflow forum I got this code in. I should have quoted it. All right, and it will return a bunch of files that will correspond to each image that you can then uh, pass to OpenCV to vectorize it. So we'll say dir equals open dir path convert this to C string. All right, and then we go ahead and loop while we can read something from that directory if get file extension equals jpeg right or get file extension and dname equals png so we can also deal with pngs then we'll push the file back to our array of strings which is the path plus forward slash plus the name file right and then we return files okay. now this get file extension oops okay so this one is actually a user defined method which we will be creating right now so this one will return get file extension from some string. This one will return the si the uh, file extension for a given file path. So if i is not equal to string. Then return s substring it was one. Again, this is not my code. I actually found it somewhere online. <coughs> right. I also just return some empty string. Right. Okay. So we have that. Get file extension. Let me just try to compile this. Don't do anything yet. So our syntax is okay. Okay, so we have a method to, to fetch the files according to a path, and we have a, a small utility that will parse a string and then return the file extension. Now, the next method that we'll be doing will be the actual core of the, of the software, which is to con return a vector of doubles from a mat. I'll just call this mat to vector. 
which accepts a MAT, which is the data type in OpenCV for a matrix. Um, and I'll have a flag value here. Right. I'll have a flag value here that will, um, if, if normalize is equal to true, then I will divide it by 256, right? Which is the um, possible number of, uh, basically I want to normalize the, the set of values. I'm not sure if it's 256 or 255. I think it's 255, uh, zero excluded. So, uh, right, I just wanna assert if the channels, okay, so one, one um, I guess improvement that we can do is that I, I currently am able only, I currently am able only to handle uh, grayscale images, meaning only one channel. So that's why I have an assertion here that if the matrix is not a single channel, then I, I won't process it. Right. So we're just going to deal with black and whites for now. So this will be our data, and of course we're going to return that data. Data. And the idea here is just this one is just a simple loop against the rows of the image and the calls. Right. So all R's will be C. Cows, <laughs> cause fuck. All right. All right. So R and C will correspond to the row call uh, coordinate of a an image. Right. Pass to it. Now to actually extract the value, we cast the M at U car. Okay, so this is the OpenCV specific part. Now, I always get confused with this because when you access a pixel value in a matrix from OpenCV, it's actually row by column, right? Uh, RC, right? So we cast this to a double and we uh, check if normalized, right? Then that value will be equal to value divided by 255. Okay, and then we push back the value to data. And basically that's the main premise for vectorizing um, a matrix to a vector of data in OpenCV C++. Right? You pass in the mat, I just have a flag here normalized. If it's normalized, I divide it by 255. Else it just takes the value as is and then pushes it back to data. Now, given that method, next thing I'll do is to be able to catch the, the file, right? So I'll have a vector of files here in my main method, okay. wherein I'll call fetch files rb1. String output file, output file will be equal to the second argument. Still a lot of improvement in terms of checking, but uh, for now this will do. And then I should also have a vector of vector of double data. This might not be the best or the most efficient way to deal with this, because vector might have a limit. If you have like thousands and thousands of files, then eventually you'll hit a, 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 a roadblock. But um, in our case, since, well at least in my case, uh, since I'd like to solve the problem of uh, one-shot classification wherein you just need small amounts of data, then this one will, this approach will probably work for now. Important thing is we have code shipped. Oops, output file. Right, so what we're doing here is that we're opening a stream for the file and we're going to store that in the vector. Okay, so we have a loop here that loops against the number of files that are found in that directory. Okay, so we have a loop right there. Now, here, we can see we have a function called imread. 
Okay, I am read will you need to pass a string to it, which is the location of a file. And it will convert that file into an open CV matrix given by Matt M. We're passing the zero to indicate that we'd like to read the image as a grayscale image, thus having only forcing the image to have only one channel. Okay, so we push back. Okay, we push back to the data. Again, our data is a vector of vector of doubles. So we're actually extracting a vector of doubles from map to vector. Okay, so we say map to vector. And right, uh, map to vector uh, for the map, which is given by M, and I'll say true. Okay, so I want the normalized version of this of the pixel value, which in the case of the Omniglot dataset will either be a 1 or a 0. So I believe that if it's white, if I'm not mistaken, it's 255. So it will be a 1, and then if it's 0, it will be a black. I wonder if it's different for this one. Let me just check out this. But in any, any case, that's how I, I'd, I'd represent these uh, images. Right? Zero for one. Whoops, sorry. Zero for one and uh, rather zero for black. And oops, let's fix this camera. Zero for black and. zero for black and one for white okay, and then we have we start in our vector vector of data and once we have that then we can write it to file okay okay so we we'll print this print the file so basically it's just a loop again int i is equal to zero i is less than data that size I plus plus for int j is equal to zero, j is less than data at i dot size, right? Because we want to get the number of elements in that array. J plus plus. What we do is in our file stream, we simply write that down. Right? If J is not equal to data at i dot size minus one, then we put a comma. Else we create a new line. Okay. So the idea here is that since we're writing to a CSV file, okay, we simply um, get the data, loop through the data given by ij okay and if we're not yet in the if j is not equal to the last um, data point or if j is not equal rather to the last index of that particular row then we keep on writing commas else we um, Else we know we're in the we're in the last line, so we create a new line. Okay, actually, we can still improve this by saying right if we're already right if we're already in the last or if G rather if I is not equal to data that size minus one then we keep on writing a new line right because if it were in the last line if we're already in the last index then we wouldn't write a new line because sometimes those new lines will have a problem uh, later on when we try to read it again right and then finally we close close the stream and we say done okay 
So let me just see if this program compiles. Okay, we have a bunch of errors. Line. Okay, I'm going to correct this first. Line 7, if I'm not mistaken. All stream. File. Right. It should be files. files line 39 mm -hmm. there's my error mm -hmm. j is not equal to blah 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 Oh, here. All right. Knocking up parentheses right there. Okay, so we compiled. Um, okay, so I guess we're okay with compiling the program. Uh, now let's give it a try. I'm going to copy these images. And I'm going to place it. Actually, just the. Oops. Accidentally dragged it out. What's that character zero? Right. Go back there. What's happening? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Stop. Hmm? Where did my files go? Okay, that's weird. Uh, Character one. Right, so I'm going to use these images. Zoom out a bit. Okay, so this is my image directory. Okay, I'd like to read from this. Let's go copy this. So, so we need the input directory and the output file. So I'm going to pass the image directory and the output file. I'll just put it in the desktop. I'll say, um, let's call this Magi Character One Zero One. Excuse me. Dot CSV. And done. Right, let's see if we actually. Right, so there we have it, our CSV file. Hopefully I got in some zeros somewhere. Uh, hmm. Let's go check it out. Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of zeros. Mostly ones. All right, so that's it for the tool for uh, creating an image to vector. Okay. 
Okay, so just to recap, so this very simple C++ tool based on OpenCV will accept two parameters. That would be the, um, the input directory where the images are located and the output file where we would write um, the results to. Basically, this, this software will, will take an image and it will turn it to a vector row column wise by taking the pixel value and dividing it by 255 so we're just dealing with normalized values okay. so we have a function here called map to vector that accepts a matrix bool normalized you can parameterize that later on uh, and then it will just loop through the rows and the columns and then create a value for that given coordinate if it's normalized divided by 255 and push back the value to the array and return the data we also have a utility function that will fetch the files from a directory store it as a vector of strings and then return it and of course to get the file extension to check if we're just dealing with jpeg or png images in the main method Okay, we fetch the files, get the output file, build up our data container, open up the file, read each file as an image, push it back to the data as a vector of doubles using our map to vector function, and print it to the file as a CSV file. Okay, so this is a tool that I'll be using to vectorize the image data and then uh, run it through some classification model. Okay, so that's it for now.